Hello everyone! It has been a long time, but I'm finally back with an art video. I got a comment a while back asking me on an instruction video on how to make a gag comic. I tried several ways of explaining it, because normally I make comics traditionally, but I ended up having so much footage that it was difficult to work around with what I wanted to explain. So I decided to show you it digitally. Um, now, of course, this isn't the way I make it, but it's an option. Um, I want to show you just how you can start making them, what kind of processes are needed to come up with a gag comic. Now you can create one. Let's start making a gag comic. We start with the digital setup first. As you can see, I'm working on a different program than last time. I have some difficulties with Photoshop at the moment. I'm also thinking about switching over to Clip Studio Paint because the issues have been going on and on for a few years now and it's getting worse and worse which, uh, with every update. And I don't have these issues with Clip Studio Paint um, ever. So it's really a Photoshop thing. So let's get over the setup. You want to go to a normal page or illustration is fine. You set it on custom. Now I selected A4 as a size, uh, but I did find a format suggestion on the internet in inches. Now I don't understand inches, but if you are from a country who uses inches, I will post the link to this format down below. I do suggest you add like normally around three millimeters. You can go for one centimeter, more of a border around it to have more uh, playing fields on making it. It's more comfortable that boy, way, but see what you will do. Uh, and resolution, we will actually, I want to set it on 900. And we click OK. And now we have a little page. We are going to open up Word. Now, why are we going to set up Word? We still need to make a script for the gag comic. So uh, I will think about a, a gag quickly, uh, probably use some old figures of mine in order to make something. And I will get right back when I have a text to show you how you get yeah, the text ready. So I've came up with a plot. It's Maybe not the best, but it's good enough to showcase something. I have the name of the plot uh, and the name of the comic on top. Then I start with the panels, with paneling. So panel one, panel two, panel three. To make it more readable, you can change this in colors if you want. I have the action that must be shown in the comic in cursive. And further, I describe the character stalking in the panel. So this is one character who has two balloons, one character with one balloon. Now, this may be tricky, but we'll see if it works. The positive side on it, you can always edit your own comic into fitting. So if this doesn't work, we can always change something in the text as long as the uh, base point of the plot still comes across. Here, there is no talking, just an action. And we have a panel with something happening right here with the punchline at the end. So this is quite a classic way on making these things. Um, so I will start making a preset on the comic right now. I have my because I have two screens, I have my text on the other side of my screen, so I can read it. And now I will have to start and make the comic. But we get there. Now we can see, when we zoom out, that these are the places where it snaps onto the paper.
we have our grid. Let's make this a little bit more nicer. Here's a little weird spot. Now we keep our grid on a separate layer. Then we'll start sketching. First, I'd like to have the text written in the balloons so I can see in the text what's going to happen in the panels and how much space it will take. We want a good font for the comic. So I'll choose something random right now that's just good enough and readable. Let's see how this goes. And then after that, we will make some color layers, but this is the idea. Right, so we go back to our sketching brush. Sometimes I sketch in blue, sometimes I just sketch in black and make it gray. It doesn't really matter. This is the sketch and you already see this doesn't work you can do the help here that's fine that's not a problem but over here this doesn't work so we need to move this a bit and i think over here is the best one we have Now I will do this very quickly for this video. I will probably speed up some segments anyway because it will become too long. Making a comic is just, it takes time and patience. It may not be the neatest comic, but I just want to show you what the basic principles are. So we have this sketch and we start with our definitive line. Now there are several options which you can do. You can start with this kind of brush. Uh, as you can see when you zoom in, it has a narrow blurry kind of line. The problem with this is, for example, if I make a closing circle and I want to use my bucket tool, you will get this which is really annoying. You can bucket a couple of times more until it fades, but you will see it will affect the line. This choice to make, maybe you find it mm, not 
two present, but if you use this line, you will see immediately this line is way harder than this line. For the eyes, this line looks way more relaxing than this one. You don't have this problem as much when you draw with your hands with ink, because you scan it in and the scanner makes it different and you can edit it later. But this still results in these kinds of problems. So I will use this line regardless because I like it that when I use my bucket tool, it will still fill. Now you do need to make sure that anti-aliasing is off when you use this tool with this brush. Anti-aliasing is meant for lines like this to be bucketed. Only even with anti-aliasing, the bucket tool doesn't cover all the lines you saw back then. I will choose a pen I find comfortable to draw with for this. And you will see how I ink it later. as can be. We can put this one on 100 again. And we will start coloring with the basics. Now just like the bucket tool, make sure anti-aliasing is off. Unlike Photoshop, you can't get rid of this annoying selection thing. It has some getting used to, at least I had to get used to it. But it's fine.
player. Now, because it's a gag comic, more often than not, it's more common to keep the color simple. So shading and highlights should be minimal. Gradients are mostly for backgrounds. For example, I want to shade this. The tool works a bit differently here. You see? And then you can shade it the way you want. We have all the coloring done now. And what is it what you do next? Well, it depends. We finished a get comic now. Then it's time to save the comic. You can use different formats. For example, this is the web view format. PNG or GPG are the best formats to use. So let's do it like that and just save both just in case. Now in Clip Studio Paint, remember when you save it as a PNG or a, a GPG or any other format that isn't the Clip Studio Paint format, your layers will flatten and merge. So if you want to edit something later, go to the Clip Studio uh, format so you can edit colors and everything around. By the way, if you want to make it smaller in file size, merge it into 300 dpi. Save it again. Make a 300 file. Oh, okay. So, this is finished. I can show you one of the comics, gear comics I made. And this is how it eventually turned. But I was searching through what kind of humor do I want is in this comic. And it was a bit destructive. It has a bit of a dark humor inside of them, which I personally enjoy, but it's something you need to make your comfortable with. And you need to find where you can publish and for how much you can publish a comic book, how much pages you need and how much gags you need in order to finalize uh, the publishment of the book. Uh, the best part would be if you can go to a publisher and the publisher wants to press your comic book themselves. Here it's very rare for that to happen. There are a lot of people who just publish it themselves go to markets or online and sell them that way, which is fine as well. You need to create a uh, logo uh, which shows what comic is about. A ground rule of that is if the logo is black and white, it's still very distinguishable. For the inside of the book, I wanted to do something funny. Sometimes you open a book and there's some kind of print or map or whatever inside. And I wanted to do something similar. Normally when you found a publisher, they have certain formats and file sizes, file types they request. It really depends where you want to go. Like I said, GPG and PNG are most common. If you want to press it physically, you need to have the file size CMYK, which stands for cyan, magenta, yellow and black. I know. Why not call CMYB, but it's K. And uh, those are the color tones they use, the ink tones they use to print it. That's why you need that file size. If you send it to them with RGB, the colors won't be as you see them on the screen. If you want to publish something digitally and physically, you need both file sizes. If you want to make a webtoon out of it, 
of course you won't have an oblong kind of size like you see here but you will have to make it scrolling down and also for that uh, for instance if you go to webtoon or something like that and you want to publish something they tell you what kind of file size and how what kind of balloons and all kind of stuff they require for you to publish it because dependable on which country you live in what format size you use it differs but just know that if you want to do that just look on the internet call the company because they are mostly kind and if you're inexperienced there is a uh, business out there who prints books like this who gladly want to help you because you're a paying customer and if they don't help you you won't be their customer now something to note if you search for how to print these books you probably aren't going to find it per se on how to publish or print a comic book uh, something i used was companies that print papers for schools like if you are in the final year of college or something some people make uh, the reports they have to make to finish their studies in books they really literally have to make books and that is how i found those sites but you can also just search for uh, probably printing companies i hope you learned something from this video if you liked it leave a like maybe subscribe if you don't didn't like it leave a dislike but also i'm very curious what you thought about the video did it help you in any way is there something still unclear about how to make a gag comic is there something specific you need to know because i can always reply for any added information that's lacking please let me know down below and I will try to do better. I think I will wrap it up now and see you next time.